Hey there kiddos, uh, welcome to another math video. This is for Eureka Math, Grade 5, Module 2, Lesson 19, Homework. And as always, I recommend that you go watch my problem set video first because I have a lot of good notes on what you're doing and why and why this check is so helpful. So uh, we're gonna jump right in. This objective for today is to divide, it's at the bottom, go look down there. Divide two and three digit dividends by multiples of 10 with single digit quotients and make connections to a written method. And so the single digit quotients, uh, that's gonna be this. And everything's gonna be really easy. We're gonna stop when we have a remainder that is less than our divisor. We're gonna run through the check and you'll put everything together. So. Um, one thing I like to do is sometimes kind of give myself a little bit of room or section off uh, some space so that I, I don't confuse my numbers. So if you want to do that too, that can be helpful. Also, set it up with a bracket and you don't have to have quite that much space in between. They do give you lots of room. But remember, the second number is the divisor that goes on the outside. And then the first number is the whole that goes on the inside. And I don't know why I can't make a straight line to save my life right now, but that's just the way it is. So anyway, using the estimating that we've been doing for the last couple of lessons, you try to guess what number is going to go in your quotient and where it's gonna go. Let me just remind you, place value matters. So how many 40s can you fit into 90 without going over? So that would be two. Here's your single digit quotient. Remember the steps of multiplication, divide, multiply, subtract, compare, bring down. We don't have any, com we don't have any bring down and the comparison is really just to make sure that we don't have too much left over. So if I have two sets of 40, I will use 80 out of the 90, which leaves 10 left. We're today we're just gonna put this up in a little remainder with, um, you can put a line or don't put a line, that doesn't really matter, but put it off to the side and do not put that 10 as part of your answer up here. That'll really confuse you later. Here's your check. This is us checking to make sure we got it right. Take your double digit times the single digit. Oh, and they like to do it this way. I'm so sorry, I almost always do it this way. You could totally do 40 times two, yay, because it's all really easy at this point. Um, just out of habit, because most of the time we have big problems, I will set it up vertically. So there's your 80. And then, instead of rewriting it, I'll just, I don't know if this is lazy or bad, or the math people are like, oh, this is terrible. Um, anyway, you wanna put your remainder back with what you got. And then you have your 90, if you wanna rewrite it, do the 80 plus 10, like the math people suggest up here, to get your 90. When you have your 90, you should actively look and make sure it matches. Because that's the whole purpose of the check, is to make sure that when you take apart the 90, that you're getting the proper number of groups with the remainder. And then when you put it back, the groups and the remainder that you're actually getting back to 90. Okay, so uh, that's what we're doing on each problem here. So take your 60 and 95, and how many 60s can you fit into 95? And again, it's kind of logic and it's kind of counting. You can fit one. And subtract 60. And sometimes kids will say, well, I wanna do it by place value, and you might have regrouping, and other times you can just count up the difference. So it's really up to you at that point. Uh, five minus zero and then nine minus six. When you get a big remainder, you just have to make sure that it is not bigger than this. I could have a remainder all the way up to 59 and that would be fine. But if I get a remainder of 60, then it's time to bump up my quotient. So we're gonna stop here and do remainder 35. Do my check, which is 60 times one. I'm gonna try to do it the right way. 60 times one equals 60. Take your 60 and add the remainder. And I know what kids are gonna do. They're gonna go, well, I don't know if I have regrouping. Okay, so that's why I always end up doing things vertically anyway. Okay, so 95, 95, you bring it right up here. Make sure you check. And we got the same uh, dividend that we started with, so yay. Next one, 30 is your divisor. 280 is your dividend. Now, when you look digit by digit, you might say, well, can I fit 
30 into 28, two digits, two digits. No, you can't because it's too small. So that's why we're going and using all of these. And remember, the whole goal today is just single digit quotients. So how many times can you count by three and get as close as you can to 28 without going over? Now, if you went up to 10, that would be 300 and that would be too big and you have a double digit. So if you tried for nine in this ones place, and you multiply 9 times 0 and 9 times 3, you'd get 27, which is just about right because we have to be below, exact or below. And then we subtract. Whoops, close that. Do your check. I suppose you don't have to keep writing the word check, but that's what's happening here. We are checking. 30 times 9 is 270. And then we have our remainder of 10 and we get 280, and there you go. Let me fold this back. Keep going. My creaky chair. 60 into 437. Now six, when you look at the 43, look at that and say, how many times can I multiply six and get something close to 43? This is just like finding those compatible numbers that we were working with recently. And so what, notice where I'm gonna put my quotient. 43 is not divisible by 60. So I have to put my quotient here, but I'm using a seven because seven times six is 42. Seven times zero is zero. So I should start seven times zero, zero, seven times six, 42. Now you do your subtraction to find the remainder. Put your remainder up on its own. Do your multiplication to check. 0, 420, that's what we just multiplied. Put your remainder back there with it. And you should get what you started with. Okay. Now, some kids will get confused about where to put the seven. Okay, now you're not gonna put anything here because this is not gonna be divisible. If I was to multiply seven times 60, I get 420. So it's like you are you have to work in the right place value position. It's seven ones, it's not seven tens, and this is the tens place. It's not seven hundreds, that's the hundreds place. So keep everything lined up. Place value matters in long division. When I was growing up, nobody ever told me that. So I was like, oh, it's just a big fat answer line, and it wasn't. So anyway, I learned it eventually the hard way. Okay, so now you have your three digit numbers. So how many 80s can you fit into 346? So then we back it up and go, well, 80 is really big. So what could I multiply eight by to get close to without going over 34? And you might say four. And I would say, nice guess. And then do your subtraction. That's your remainder. And then do your check. 80 times four gives you the 320, which you should know because you just did it. Plus 26, that's your remainder. Get your 346, make your check. That's what we started with, so hooray. And all these you should be actively thinking about every time you check it. Put a little star, put a happy face, make yourself happy, know that you did it right, and move on. Okay. Here we have a number divided by 40. A number hmm, divided by 40 has a quotient of 6 with a remainder of 16. Find the number. Now, these could make you panic if you didn't know what these words meant. But I know because you watched my problem set video that you know what the words are because I showed you where everything was. And if you don't have all that, go back in your notes, if you do have it, go back in your notes and find those words, okay? Because, not that you need to know what a number is, but you need to know where the quotient goes and you need to know where the remainder sits. So we have a mystery number divided by 40. You need to know that that goes here. We have a quotient of six. And after you do your calculation, la 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 la, you have a remainder of 16. Now the check process can help you here. In fact, this is actually going to be the solution for this and many others that you're going to have like this. They'll say, what is the number? So the check process is to use only what you have on the outside. 
So we're trying to get back to what's on the inside. So if you do the check right, then you should be able to get back to the dividend. So multiply here, six times zero, zero, six times four is 24. Notice that I'm, I'm kind of not talking you through these. You should know what to do by now. With the remainder of 16, you're gonna add, add it up, and that's what would go in here. And so when you when you've set it up properly and you know what you're doing and you know how you're separating that dividend into pieces, and then you've got sets of 40, and how many do you have? You have six sets of 40 with 16 remaining, then that is the mystery number. Okay, I hope that's helpful. Uh, number three. A shipment of 288 reams of paper was delivered. Each of the 30 classrooms received an equal share, must be a mystery number, of the paper. Any extra reams of paper were stored, very important. After the paper was distributed to the classrooms, how many reams of paper were stored? Great question for what is happening with this paper. So when you have something like this, we've got our total of the 288 reams. Okay, so if you want to try to make sense of it, being divided into these 30 classrooms, that's what the equal share means, okay? But extra reams means this might not be exact. So if you set it up with the standard algorithm, that's gonna help you see if you have a remainder and the remainder is gonna be what is the extra that is stored? And that's what the question is asking you. What's the remainder? Okay, so let's work our way through it. Now, 28 cannot be divided by 30. Okay, it's, it's not quite big enough. But 288 is very close to 300. So you know when you guess your number, you're going to want something big. And if I have 9 times 0 for 0 and 9 times 3 for 27, yes, you are very close. 8 minus 0, oh, sorry, eight, yeah, 8 minus 0 is 8, 8 minus 7 is 1. Do your quick compare. Make sure that 18 is less than 30, and it is. So the remainder is 18. And when you have your answering the question, how many reams of paper were stored, label it reams. Reams of paper, if you like. Okay. And just making sense of that remainder and all those pieces. And finally, oh, and click subscribe if you like these videos. Come back again. Uh, how many groups of 60 are in 244? Oh, love it when they do this. Read the math word. So 244 is here. And how many groups of 60? So they're saying make some groups. So set it up with your bracket. and then start your div division. Now, 60 does not fit into two or 24, so you have to use the whole 20, uh, 244. And you wanna count by six, remember this goes back a couple lessons, find that um, multiple of this number. Well, six times four is 24. So multiply, get your 24. And what do you do now? Well, I've got four left over, so how many groups of 60 are there? Well, even though there's this remainder four, there are four whole groups. Okay, you're on your way to another group, but we don't, we, but we run out, we fall short. So there are four whole groups, and then we've got a few left over, but that's on your way to the fifth group, but we don't have enough, so it's only four. Okay, so a lot of these questions are gonna be like, when we divide, what does the quotient mean? How could I label it? What do I do with the remainder? Sometimes I use it and sometimes I don't. Anyway, lots of fun ahead with division. Hopefully I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.